my name's Rachel Howarth. This is a video to demonstrate cooking methods on a campfire. So I've got my fire here. Um, it is putting out quite a lot of heat. So I've put the grill over the top. Uh, the embers have burnt through and now the, the wood on top will start to catch a light. Um, so today I'm going to be making a tomato and onion pasta with some garlic bread. Um, so we'll be using boiling, frying and baking for this method of cooking. So I've got my food prep table here. I've washed my hands with soap and running water. I've also used some antibacterial gel as well. I'm gonna begin by putting some pasta in my pan and getting that on the boil. Well, actually, I'm gonna put the water on first, I think. So I've got some fresh water in there and I'm just gonna pop that on top over here to get that boiling. I'm then going to begin frying my pre-prepared onions and tomatoes while that water is boiling. So I've already chopped these. Um, in a forest school setting, I would have a table or a designated food pre preparation area so the children can prep the food. And um, so for example, chopping, um, you might also like to use meat um, if you have the correct storage facility, so a core box to kind of um, make sure that meat is stored safely before use. So I've got my onions and tomatoes here and I'm just gonna pop those into my pan. It has got a little bit of oil already in it. And those will start frying. While that's going, I'm going to prepare my bread. There we go. So, my water is starting to warm up nicely. Just gonna move that over a little bit. So while that's going, I'm gonna start preparing my bread. Here I've got a small pot of flour. And all you need to do to make garlic bread, it's really simple, just flour and add a little bit of water. So I've got some fresh water here in my bottle. And you just need a dash at a time because if you add too much, then you're going to end up with a very, very soggy dough. You just want quite a stiff dough for this one because you need to wrap it around a stick. So I'm mixing that in just a tiny bit at a time. There we go. All the while keeping an eye on my campfire to ensure that it is safe. And I can feel some drops of rain starting now. Great British summer. So here we go, we've got a dough forming. Quite a stiff dough, maybe a tiny bit more. Actually, before I add any water, I'm gonna add my garlic paste because it is a garlic bread. I am a very big fan of garlic. I'm gonna mix that in flavoured throughout. I can hear my onions and tomatoes just starting to frazzle there, which is a good sound. Okay, so I've got my dough formed here. This is a really easy recipe for small children and it's great to watch the state of the flour change as you add more water. So you can see that it's made a nice solid, solid lump of dough here and I'm just going to pay some attention to my garlic, my onions and tomatoes, give them a little bit of a move around and check on my water for my pasta, move that off there. Oh yeah, that pasta water is simmering now, so I know it's ready to add some pasta to the pan and I am going to just carefully place it on the floor and pour some in. I'm going to do is using my hand, my hands are nice and clean, 
I did one for free. Free session. I'm going to carefully roll my dough into a nice sausage shape. Quite sticky. Very nice sausage. You want it quite thin. It might take a little bit off actually. Quite a lot. Right, quite thin. What you're going to do is using a nice green stick, we are going to wrap it around the stick. Right there. So you might choose to um, use some foil to protect your dough from the stick, which I might do now actually. I am pregnant already, so be sure of food hygiene. So I'm going to use my baking paper here to just wrap it around the stick before I put my dough on. I know that my dough is touching a clean stick and then we're sort of going to wrap it around carefully into a sausage shape like that around there so it's a kind of a spiral garlic bread spiral and then using my other bit of paper I'm going to wrap the entire thing around here like that so I've kind of created a little dough ball in there and I'm just going to lay that close to the fire here so it begins to cook through. I'm going to put my glove back on and check on my, oh look the pan is boiling over just in time. Move that across and then have to cook through and move that off the heat. Okay, give that a good old whoop. Good old stir. So that is ready. I can put that down here. And then put it back on my pan of pasta. That's nearly ready. A couple more minutes while my bread is cooking through. Okay, just going to turn the bread around like that. And pop my onions and got tomatoes on the edge there so they keep warm in the pan while the other things I'm cooking. Just going to keep an eye on my bread. Might need to move it a little bit closer. Just slide the bake through inside its little oven there. I'm using my heat proof gloves because it just allows me to be able to pick up the pans more easily um, and particularly with the heat from the fire, very important. I'm downwind of the smoke right now, um, <laughs> if it weren't for the filming process I would probably choose a new, different angle to come to the fire. that red around you can see that it's starting to sort of golden on the foil there when cooking with the children at forest school it's really important to um sort of establish a good routine so i would um demonstrate cooking in stages so stage one would be hygiene and uh, stage two would be the preparation of food discussing the recipe and making sure that everything's ready before you begin and um, the children would obviously be involved in preparing the food at a food prep station so like I've got here but I would have it further away from the actual fire and um, stage two would be the cooking process so talking about whichever cooking method you are using if you're boiling or steaming and um, some people have tried smoking um, and then the next stage would be sharing the food and enjoying it, talking about the process together around the campfire and that communal space. And the final stage would be clearing away and ensuring that any food scraps are put in the appropriate bin um, and there's nothing left over and um, that wild animals could inadvertently eat um, and ensuring that you are making sure that the, the cooking space that you've used is tidy and clean as you would expect it to be for the next time you use it and also for the rest, you know, the rest of the, the woodland community, be it people or animals using the space. So I'm just going to turn this bread round again. Hopefully, I might check on it. Put that up there. 
quick check. So it's starting to cook through. What I'm going to do is just move this paper off. It's a bit sticky. I've made my dough a bit too sticky. Remove the paper off. And now I'm going to Now that it's kind of solidified, I'm going to pop it on the fire as is to kind of bake the outside. So, check on my pasta again. Another good point for cooking with young children is to um, ensure that there are there very responsible for timing the food. So if you're cooking pasta, have a look at the instructions on the pack. Um, they can use sand timers or other simple methods of timing food. It just supports them for being responsible for what they're doing and um, ensuring that, you know, if, especially if you're using meat, um, the food is cooked thoroughly. So they're aware of food hygiene standards as well. So now we've got those embers in the middle here. I'm gonna move my bread over so I'll cook it there in the middle. It takes a little while to bake the bread. Now hopefully we can finish this off before the rain comes. away. I won't blow anywhere. I think. Soon my pasta will be ready to strain and I can add those onions and tomatoes. I have a passata sauce as well. Add them to that. It's important to think about the hot spot of the fire um, and keep an eye on which foods need to be where on your fire. So what I might do now is swap the pan over because that water is boiling over and pop that bread there so it's a bit closer to the heat and cooks through. And then I've got my tomato dinners here which are done and on the side there, keeping warm, ready for use when my pasta is cooked through. So I'm just going to give it a quick stir and take this around, moving it just a bit further away from the flames now. Oh. Okay, that pasta is nice and soft, ready to be strained. And what I'm just going to do is use the lid here and strain it over. You might like to add um, some other flavourings, pesto for example, and then we've prepared garlic and onions, nicely frazzled. And then pop that back on the heat for a few minutes just to cook through. You can see my bread is now almost fully baked, just going to turn it around that way. Get that heat through, get my plate ready. Ready to plate up in a couple of minutes. That bread's gonna have a nice smoky flavour as well. It's going right on the um the smoke part, the smoky part of the, the fire. Oh. 
out. My plate. Whoops. So another important part of the first school cooking process is ensuring that your equipment is cleaned. So you would need a cleaning station as well as a preparation station. It comes as part of the tidying away tidying away process in cooking. And it's important that the children are responsible for that as well. And here we go, we've got my garlic bread, which is nice, you can just tear that off quite hot. Um, so I'm gonna pop it on my plate like that. Garlic bread with um, tomato and onion pasta. Thank you.